This is a crowd podcast. You want to wait till they hate the kids. Oh, that, my that's friend when it's easier. So good. That's when it's fun. Oh, it's Should have said me. that in the recording. Yeah. <laughs> wait till the kids. Wait till they hate their kids. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi! In leopard print, just for a change. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you very much. I'm just loving. We're doing a few episodes uh, in person, and today's one of them. And we're in person, like, I just touched her. I just touched your knee. <laughs> this is so exciting. <laughs> um, our producer has hooked us up with some very cute heart shaped mugs. Um, and the only thing to put in it is, of course, Dr. Pepper Zero. Absolutely not. Shush your face. Whatever. Is hold on for some ASMR, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on. Oh my God, how do you open a can? Oh! <laughs> Oh, that is, is so that, sexual. Like, it's, it's just so satisfying. That hold sound. on, I haven't even finished. Oh, oh, stop it. Oh, stop it now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is obviously Pepsi Max Live because nothing else. Hold on, wait. <laughs> you, you're filthy. <laughs> Honestly, that's actually so sexy to me. <laughs> you need a twirl to go with it. I do need a little twirl to go with it. Do you want to have a cheers, babes? Cheers to being in cheers. person. Cheers to your gross drink and my great drink. <laughs> Although I did, when I put on my stories about Pepsi Max Lime, I had a bunch of people talking to me about Pepsi Max Strawberry. Oh, that sounds great. And Pepsi gross. Max Raspberry. Oh, no. I think you're all incorrect, everybody. And Cherry. Even I don't like Cherry one, which Isn't I think Dr. people... Dr. Pepper's Cherry. No. Dr. Pepper is cherry. You're offending me. Everyone <laughs> says this to me. Dr. Pepper is cherry. Can I try some of your Dr. Pepper? It's not. It's, not, it's like, do you remember Dan, Dandelion and Burdock? No, I'm not 100. <laughs> I love Dandelion and Burdock. I think I had a lot of vodka Dandelion and Burdock at my ex-boyfriend's uni once. We used to have Smart Price uh, Dandelion Mate, and Burdock. Mate, that is cherry. It's not cherry. It's like more aniseed and I'll have none more of it. <laughs> She's so angry. Pepsi Max <laughs> cherry is disgusting. Dr. Pepper <laughs> is God. Enough. Oh, hope you get scurvy some? well you won't with that will you <laughs> no I don't actually no yeah I yeah, do yeah try some is it, it means... cold no it's it's quite oh how can you drink no I know coat? it's better cold okay it's not terrible oh what <laughs> that's actually quite nice <laughs> yes. I actually I really like that so anyway let's move on from <laughs> 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 talking about diet go. what's happening do you know I'm really good actually like I'm feeling a lot more like myself which is amazing I have just um <laughs> gonna really judge me for this <laughs> just before we started recording um i phoned buddy's crush <laughs> so i put my dog in a daycare for the first time it's his first day today his first day at school <laughs> <laughs> so matt dropped him off and uh i knew like about an Didn't hour die. after drop off i phoned matt and was like was he all right how did he get on <laughs> did he settle down. in all I'd right i'd go in and he was many friends <laughs> And Matt ran me through it. And I was like, do you think he'll be okay? He was like, he'll be fine. I was like, okay. Um. Anyway, so I just phoned them and I was like, I know this is really pathetic, but Not is he all right now? Is he getting on? And they're like, yeah and i'm like oh no what's he done oh like God, is he bitten he someone other, like he's not aggressive i knew it wasn't gonna be that but he like, peed on someone or what is he weed somewhere he shouldn't they're like yeah he's very humpy <laughs> Like buddy school report. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's be proud or not. Proud mum. Like, yeah. I humpy. Like, yeah. Do you know what? I'm not entirely sure if you mean he's grumpy or he's actually humping things. Humpy is in. Oh, <laughs> humpy Wait, pumpy. Uh, rumpy love... pumpy. So the people that can watch this can see the action that Laura just did. <laughs> if you're just listening to us today, just imagine what she just did on this chair. <laughs> She's showing the chair a good time. So please carry on <laughs> about your humpy dog. So anyway, yeah, I've got a humpy dog. You've got a humpy dog. Other than that, I'm great. How are you? <laughs> so Buddy's first school report. Yeah. Good, sociable, humpy. just slightly horny. Just horny. Just horny. Yeah. Speaking of horny. Hello. <laughs> How's the date in life? Um, so I've been terrible in 2023 so far, feeling a bit like an anxious aardvark right now. Mm. And me and Laura talk about it before. And then of all the things to go first in your life when you're trying to manage your anxiety is going to be dating. Of course. I don't of need course. that drama in yeah. life right now. So I'm a bit rubbish, but I will get back on it because I still want to continue host season. So don't worry, guys. I will continue. I will report back. Maybe like in a month or so's time, we can do another deep dive. <laughs> 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 and I could talk a little bit more about it. Okay, that sounds good. As long as you're looking after yourself, though. Always. Your that's the thing. Always has to come first. 
it is a massive toll on like obviously your time yeah. and just emotionally is a bit like you really got put Even into just it. Just getting ready, hair and makeup. Oh mate, the don't, bloody... boys don't appreciate this. They don't. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not using Urban Decay Naked Three Palette for them. I'm using it for me. <laughs> but still, you don't want to basically go on a date that's a waste of, of your Naked Three Palette that's 12 years old and you shouldn't be using. But that's not the point. Do you ever do that though? Like, sorry, like dates or just even friendship things, or you go out or like with family. That was a waste of like, makeup. That's a waste of makeup. That, isn't that the worst? That's, that's probably that's the worst co- like insult. I could be given if someone said to me like spending today with you has been a waste of my mascara oh my god that's probably the worst thing you say to me you put that on like a card <laughs> to break up with a you friend you are a waste of makeup a waste of mascara you know if, if I said that to a guy after a date other than my like you know it's nice to meet you good luck in all your endeavours like text that they get I'd be like you are a waste of my Urban Decay Naked 3 I'd be like Sure. They wouldn't care, but okay. a friend, a girl, a girl would care. God, understand. That's maybe. Biting. I mean, we're going to talk about this in the episode, but maybe that's a way to break up a friendship. You're it's a hard to do. To You're Charlotte a waste Tilbury. of mascara. <laughs> You're a waste of Charlotte Tilbury. That's a bit the way harsh. To do it, guys. Maybe must, but, uh, sometimes you got to be brutal. <laughs> got to be brutal. But yes, yeah, so I will do more of an update on dating. Great. Um, but if you are out there dating, put yourself first. Sometimes take breaks. Take yeah, breaks. De- yeah. Like delete the apps if you need to. <sighs> Stop talking to dickheads. Don't text him. Don't text him. You know who I'm talking about. Just don't text him. <laughs> um, and just look after yourself first, basically. <laughs> Sound advice. So before we get started with today's episode, I wanted to really quickly talk about something that my DMs have been absolutely full of, and that is about flying when you're plus size. Oh, yeah. Because it can be a bit daunting and a bit scary, and I've had so many messages that I just thought it might be nice to do a quick recce of my top tips, having obviously just done it myself. Mm-hmm. So first of all, I just want to say, like, please do not let it stop you from going on the holiday like doing things that you want to do because life is for living and for experiencing and like yes it's a bit shit I think for anybody like even people in straight size bodies it's like not a nice thing to do is it well some people are weird and enjoy flying I'm not one of those people I love flying it's like the necessity but like yeah. yes yeah, it's a bit you. shit so I just wanted to say that like actually like I've done it and it wasn't that scary um it was fine so My first tip is to basically do your research because different airlines have different kind of seat widths and seat pitches. Um, What do you mean by seat pitches? So seat pitch um, is like I'm talking about like the overall space. Okay, got it. So fun fact, uh, seat widths have actually shrunk by two inches in the last decade and so have seat (laughs) pitches. What? Yeah, as a nation, well, as a world <laughs> we've actually all gotten bigger yes so it's COVID, just obviously leave us alone. airlines just trying to kind of pack seats in so this is the thing right so I always felt like a really crappy person and I was like I blamed myself mm. for not fitting in a seat and not having the seat but not fit me and actually when I realized that like a lot of people that are even smaller than me like say like a size 16 which is the mm. UK average just fit in a seat and just have the seatbelt fit that actually made me feel yeah a lot better and actually i realize it's not my fault so i just wanted to kind of share that first and foremost also i used to have great shame about asking for a seatbelt extender i remember my first experience i was 21 i was on a work trip for germany i didn't know that i would need one it didn't even cross my mind hmm. and the seatbelt didn't fit and i was i was honestly mortified like you know when like heat rises in you and you're like oh my, oh my god. god it was awful yeah. and then after that <clears> i bought my own one and then i would always wear a scarf clip it in and hide it and hope that the air hostess like the crew uh didn't spot me yeah and I don't know if it's just age or kind of confidence but I literally didn't take it with me I didn't wear a scarf for the first time ever flying this time as soon as I got on I asked for a seatbelt extender and yes it's bright orange and it's not the nicest thing (laughs) but it yeah I just hate that but like it was done it was discreet it was fine I did it it's not the end of the world um but anyway different um airlines have different things so if um like EasyJet for example window seats, mm. um if you book a window seat the armrest goes up on the left so you have more room to scooch over. Oh, okay, good. And um for any of our American friends listening, Southwest Airlines has something called a customer of size policy, and basically if they have the space they'll give you an extra seat for That's free. That's good for you. That's really good. If there's availability, I think you have to like pay a deposit and then you get it back at the end. It's a bit weird okay but anyway it's better than nothing um and the other bit of advice i just wanted to say was to don't book a emergency exit row 
seat because you cannot have a seat belt extender in that row. Oh, and I, I found know. out this the hard way when we went to Tenerife last year and they were like, I'm really sorry, but you're going to have to move. And I was like, I had to do like what kind of walker chain. Oh. It was mortifying. So for some reason, you're just not allowed one in the emergency exit rows. And it's the same for extra legroom rows because they're normally the emergency exit rows. So don't book extra legroom oh. or an extra large seat even because extra large seat doesn't mean extra width. It just means extra, extra legroom. Leg. I will also say that we went premium economy mm. and the seat was comfortable and I didn't need a seatbelt extender on the way back. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's That's the thing though. It's like, it's money, isn't it? But that's, that's what's sad, isn't it? It's like you have to pay to be able to fit in the seat. Be comfortable. And it's a whole mess of issues. Yeah. But um, I like what you said first off of like, don't let that stop you from flying. And I know that's been like, for me personally, that's something I'm, I was worried about. I'm yeah. not as worried about now. The whole point is your safety on a plane. Yeah. If you bring one yourself on, I think there's like things about that you might not be able to, or you have to ask for one. There's no shame around it. You have to be safe on a plane. Absolutely. So that's yeah. the most important thing, but don't let that stop you from taking trips if you're able to, or going away, or yeah. don't let that be the thing that stops you. So when I was on a holiday, I was reading a fantastic book by uh, a woman called Aubrey Gordon, who you might know as Your Fat Friend. So she's an author. In her book, uh, Things We Don't Talk About When We Talk About Fat, she has a quote that I re that really stuck out with me and it said, a disgust that otherwise lies dormant <gasps> reveals itself in aeroplanes. So this is the thing, like, listen, we know that you don't want to sit next to us yeah. and we get it, we get it, we totally get it. But please, like, it is, trust me when I say it is a lot worse for us than it is for you. Like the anxiety that a plus size person will feel in the days weeks maybe even months leading up to that plane ride trust me when I say like it's hard like for us and we don't want to be encroaching on your space we just want to fly and get so safely like you mm. do as well last thing I want to say about that is I actually also did something really scary on holiday which was a seaplane oh my goodness so I always thought like it's always been Matt's stream to go to like somewhere nice like Bora Bora Maldives and I was like nope because you've got to do a seaplane didn't think I would you fit. said no because of a seaplane yeah Oh my goodness, I didn't know that. The only reason I did it was because I saw this really cool creator on TikTok and she had gone to the Maldives and she basically did a, she was plus size and I, I, I was like looking at her thinking, I think we're about the same size. Mm. And she was like, okay, right. So I'm tall and I'm big. She was like, and yes, it was a bit cramped, mm. but it was actually all right. And Ooh, then she okay. showed the seat belts and mm. she was like, I actually messaged her privately and I was like, like I'm really nervous about it. It's actually putting me off going on holiday what like what you know will I be okay and she was like yeah she was like the main thing is the height oh. she was like the seat belts are actually bigger than a normal seat belt so I put my seat belt on and I <laughs> you're listening to this you'll be like how much um I, I had like this much room which is what 20 inches <laughs> it's fun yeah <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's just the word inches every time every damn time it? it's a person inches. putting their hands up with a diff particular distance saying <laughs> inches I'm sorry I'm sorry I am human <laughs> I will laugh at that yeah <laughs> sorry anyway uh, back to growing up discussions <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I just want to say that like I did it it was scary I didn't I, I hated it because I hate flying I didn't hate mm. it because I was fat on the way back there was a couple that like if looks could kill he was basically just started laughing and I Ew. just and then I sort of not so subtly said something like um I think I said to Matt something like if she looks at me one more fucking time I'm gonna punch her <laughs> lights out <laughs> Which Laura, the, by the way, would like never do. The great Zen girl in me just came out. The G-Town bird. I was like, you fucking want some? You want some? <laughs> um, because I don't know one likes being laughed at. No, that's ridiculed. horrible. But yeah, anyway, again, probably I not think... selling it. It was fine. It was absolutely yeah. fine. And what actually then needs to go into the bag of dicks is people being really unkind about it. Which, ladies and gentlemen, because we are in person, we actually <laughs> have a physical <laughs> <laughs> it? it has a full it is a bag everyone a hand sewed a <clears throat> dick onto yeah. a sack which by the way is absolutely huge <laughs> it is it's like 20 inches <laughs> <laughs> not quite <laughs> no, sadly no um, yeah honestly we have a physical bag of dicks so I think one of us is going to take that home by the way Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know. Is it like at school when you get to take the teddy bear <laughs> home the after the week? Take it travelling. Take pictures. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know if I might donate that to you because my take dad's coming around this weekend to do a DIY. So I'll be like, oh, hi, Dad, here is the bag of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Gav doesn't listen to the podcast. He's not going to know what we're talking about. I don't go out, so you're going to have to take it to choir, to your, <laughs> to your nan's to house, everywhere. Nan might enjoy that. Nan she'll, might like yeah, it. she'll think that's quite funny. Anyway, yeah, we've got a physical bag of dicks, which we may or may not bring to the show. <laughs> <laughs>
so the last time we did a Q&A episode, we chatted a little bit about maintaining friendships as you get older. Mm-hmm. Um, and since then, we've actually had loads of messages uh, asking to us to chat about it a little bit more. Um, so we thought we'd do a bit of an episode on it about friendships as adults and answer some of your questions. Yeah, and I'm really excited about this episode because I think it is something that I, I think a lot of us struggle with. I think it is mm. very hard to make new friendships as you get older. And I also think it's really hard to maintain friendships because oh it's not as black and white and as clear cut as it is like romantic relationships a lot of the time. And I think sometimes they're harder because they're more nuanced. Um, and dealing with the kind of loss of friendships as well can be really hard. So we're oh going to get God. into all of it today and answer some questions from listeners as well. I fully think that a friendship breakup is so much harder than an actual mm. like romantic relationship breakup. I think they can be really hard. And I think there's a lot of ambiguity around mm. it as well. Like they're not, like I said, they're not as clear cut as romantic relationships. When romantic relationships end, I think there is often like a kind of an expected grieving process. Mm. And also like, I think it's easier sometimes anyway to get closure. Mm. Whereas with a friendship, like sometimes there, there is like a big argument, mm. but more often than not, it's like they just fade out or fizzle Especially out. Especially female or... friendships, because female friendships, yeah. you know, you could be a wonderful person and both be lovely, but there is a lot unsaid. Yes. And there's and there's this sometimes quite passag, passive aggression, thank you, um, <laughs> like passag stuff about it sometimes. Yeah. Um, and I'm reading the book at the minute and the main character has has fallen out with her like best friend and it's literally mentioned like every other page of like oh god you know that I've just remembered that and that reminds me of this and she was like I wish that that like guttural like almost heartbreak didn't hit me every day because mm. then I have to remember what happened and I'm like that's actually really true yeah. like it's so hard but we don't talk about it a lot do we really no there's think... no like Ben and Jerry's Bridget Jones movie situation about friendships, about friendships. No. like you just have to move on you don't get the, the heartbreak moment ah yeah, we should have that it's tough it's tricky isn't it it's almost like an embarrassment there I think sometimes as well like so I've recently had a falling out with a like probably one of my oldest friends mm. and over like a few things and I recently felt that she blocked me on social media and I was oh, like oh, oh, oh. the ultimate cut it really I was like fucking petty <laughs> it really hurt and I was like wow that that felt really final yeah it kind of is and I, although it does sound petty I'm with you that whole thing of like oh you know you don't like my stuff on social media you don't follow me on social media like we're millennials. We can be okay with the fact that we use social media all day, every day. It's fine. Let's just move on with that fact, right? Yeah. And so sometimes, yeah, well, if you've been blocked, that is kind of like a, I don't want to see you. Yeah. Right? It did hurt. But I think it's weird. I think some friendships are for a season and some for a lifetime. And I think we did just out, kind of outgrow each other and things happen in her life. And it will, we'll get onto this a bit more. But I think one of the big things that really changes is the, like, uh, you've probably noticed as well, as soon as someone starts Crikey. to have a family. Crikey, it is changing. I realised the other day that subconsciously, I will say, all of my close friends don't have kids. Love that for you. Love that for me. <laughs> Sometimes only, yeah. you feel like, yeah, your friends have a baby and then like you don't exist or you're like, and you're sort of made to feel like you don't understand that. Mm. This is why adult friendships are difficult and specifically obviously we can only talk on female friendships but specifically female because I feel like when you grow up you have all your friends at school university or whatever like early 20s going out and stuff where your friends everyone is like your life and mm. I realized this recently yeah. I was like you're you're the center of your friend's world and they're the center of your world yeah, right totally. and that's it and then all of a sudden that's not the case anymore because they start getting into like more serious relationships marriages happen babies happen and so you're not the work yeah yet, all of that and you're not the centre of their world anymore and they're not the centre of your world. And that's really hard. And I think when I look back on like my 20s and stuff, I get really emotional about it because I love my friends. I'm so lucky. The friendships change. And then so the friendships I have now, although they're wonderful and I love them all, they're not the centre of my world and I'm not theirs. Mm. And I miss it. I miss it. So, the What I would give to go back like 10, how old am I? 10, 14 years <laughs> walking. Well, um, and just be that life of like you go out with your mates all the time are you free tomorrow night yeah of course you're fucking free tomorrow night we haven't got a schedule stuff six mm. months in advance and then the night before you can't come because you can't get a babysitter yeah that's and so it's true. T- and it's i don't like it and i think it's that glaring thing of i don't have the children yeah so 
my friends can still be a bit more the core of my life not as much when I was younger for sure it's got other stuff going on but it's just I think that and it's then coming to terms with that when you move out of that and other people have families and your friend your lives go in different directions as well and you also grow up as people I'm not the same person I was when I was 20 we change we grow yeah but it, it is tricky I think as I've gotten older I, I definitely have really struggled all my life with friendships. Like mm. I think I've always normally, I've always had a best friend growing mm. up, always had a best friend. And then like after uni, I think um, I fell out with my best friend at uni over something. I think like now I look back, I think, I think it was really petty. And I think I reckon if we'd have just chatted about it, we'd have probably, oh, it's yeah. really sad. Anyway, I have not really had like a best, best friend since. And sometimes I feel like a bad person not a bad person but like sometimes I feel like I'm almost a bit embarrassed that I don't feel like I have like a best like friend or mm. like I'm not a good person or something I don't know and I will say I do quite find it quite difficult to maintain friendships and I think I always have done and I was thinking about this in the research in the run-up to this episode and I like I'm gonna make my, sa- my dad sound like an absolute dickhead and he's not but when I was growing up my dad didn't like my mum having friendships so my mum didn't have a lot of friends. Oh, okay. So I never had that as a role model. Like I never okay. really That's had that kind of, I never saw that basically growing mm. up. And I think now for me, and I know that my mum will say this as well, that she sometimes struggles with like f- female friendships and stuff, maintaining them, getting new ones and whatever. I find it really difficult because sometimes I feel like I'm going through the motions of like, what should I say? How should I be a good friend? Rather than it kind of being natural. Being natural. It should be natural. Yeah. And with some friends, it's easier than others. Mm. But yeah, I feel like maybe this is something that we don't really talk about a lot. I don't really do, yeah. I don't feel sometimes like, I think I said this to you before, sometimes I feel like I don't understand why anyone would want to be my friend. I just find that logic so crazy because I've never felt that. But it's so interesting because people will feel that way too. Mm. Of like you've grown grown up or feeling that now. like, And so you've mentioned before that you feel that way because of your like, being bigger I think so I think being like the fat person in the like friendship group I never spoke about it or like Mm. my experiences up until like recently so I'd like Mm. go shopping and pretend that I was having a great time even though I wasn't (laughs) just gotta buy another handbag just gotta buy another scarf (laughs) (laughs) bloody scarf I don't know I feel like I'm better now at kind of I'm I'm more focused on quality than quantity I don't put up with as much shit that I as I used to although I'm not great at it mm. and I've also gotten rid of what I call the high hand friendships <laughs> like I have one oh. friend and it's just every now and again hi hun how are you no I'm done friendships friendship shouldn't like really that. have too much small talk in my opinion yeah. I want to be able to be like yo dickhead <laughs> yeah you're getting any dick lately yeah. like tell <laughs> me about the 20 inches and that's what we get, that's what we get. <laughs> well, absolutely not um yeah, I'm with you. I hate that you would ever feel like you're not deserving a friendship, but I hope that, like, obviously you've come out the other side of it. I think it is getting older. It's probably, you know, you being married as well, and you've kind of, I'm, I don't know, I'm asking the question kind of, of like, that best friend role, is that taken by the husband in that case? Yeah, think? I think it is somewhat. I think, like, me and Matt are very different. Like, I'm very emotional. <laughs> like You are? <laughs> I wear my heart on my sleeve. Mm. I talk a lot. Like, Matt will come home and be like, how's your day? And he'll get a 20-minute <laughs> essay of literally, like, minute I woke minute up replay. and I <laughs> Yeah. And then I go, we, it's kind of an ongoing joke. Yeah. And then I say to him, how's your day? And he'll go, fine. <laughs> and then we laugh and he tells me a little bit about his day. Um, but no, he is my best friend friend and I'm really really lucky to have him but I think mm. I've always I, I do sort of miss it though yeah. like I want the kind of friendship where you don't like you don't phone to say can I come over or you don't plan it four weeks mm. in advance you just turn up and be like I'm having a shit day I brought wine yeah. but is that realistic Honestly, or do we just see that in films I think the f- <laughs> Oh, it's difficult because in reality, like you would say, all my friends, I could I could call any of them now, the ones with kids, ones without, and I know that they would be there for me. But the reality of that is those pe- friends with two kids have then got to sort out their life. They can't mm. physically. So the, the people that I know would be like, oh my God, I need you, are the ones without children or oh, maybe that. So it is the logistics of it, the, the reality of that message a little bit but then I don't know because I know and I'm, I hope my friends are listening and they I know and they know that I know and I know that they know and everyone knows <laughs> everyone knows that, yeah that if I called them I need them they'd be there in a second but it is also realising that those friendships are slightly different than they were and that's fine yeah. Um, and it is interesting so from the side of me of like I realise that my 
best friends have now got their best friends and their husbands. Mm. But then it's really interesting from you to be like, yeah, okay, my best friend is my husband, but also I miss the girly stuff or yeah. like just having like more mates about and stuff. That's interesting because I've only ever thought about it from my side <laughs> of being like the single child free one and being like, oh, all my friends got kids and that's all they ever talk about. And they don't, they really don't. I think that again, we don't really talk about, about no. that, do we? Enough. No. That really. sounds quite lonely. Yeah, it, it can be, but I think all my girls get it. But again, it's it's kind of like it's give and take. You know, I'm, I'm not always the one that goes out and asks them what they're doing. And I could do that more. And I know I could do that more. And I know they're all laughing right now, currently going, Lauren, like, reply to your bloody WhatsApp, Lauren. You like, come worst. on now. Yeah, I'm literally the worst. <laughs> um, I've got better, would you, you believe? Better. I used to have 64 unread WhatsApp chats oh. at any one time. I've currently got it down to, I think... 15 so this yay is, this is where we differ again like wow friends, are you a responder so i cannot have any like t- apps with like notifications on <gasps> show Emails, me text. your desktop and i will it's show clean. you mine mine is, mine is clean. oh you're gonna die got one email i'm gonna have to get rid of that oh my no, next, <laughs> next account is overdue like clean look how clean has it clean 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 i can't look bear how that. dirty mine is <laughs> <laughs> can't handle it can't handle that it that is hilarious Oh, Lauren, that makes me feel (laughs) gross. How do you cope with life? I don't. (laughs) That's how I cope, mate. I don't cope. I don't respond to anyone. (laughs) Should we we take some listener questions? Yes. Yes, please. Because the first one that we had in was someone asking about um, people that don't reply. (laughs) Lauren. (laughs) Uh, So she says, my friend isn't great at replying or meeting up. When do I know it's time to stop putting effort in? Do I let her go? (gasps) No. (laughs) (laughs) Do you know how many friends I would have if they all did that? Zero <laughs> friends. <laughs> However, she did say meeting up as well. I'm mm. good at meeting up. I do not ever tend to like mug off that. Replying to people and stuff like that. There is a whole thing behind it of like, so my thing why I don't reply is because genuinely my brain, when I've been quite feeling quite down mentally, your brain is so taken up by the things that you are feeling ugh about. Work, other stuff, all these kind of stuff that, you cannot have, it sounds really lame, but the brain no, capacity yeah. to reply is just not there. And also, I don't want to give you a lame reply. I want to give you a good reply, but I can't do that right now. And I know that's wrong because it's kind of like, just send you in whatever, be like, mate, I'll respond in a minute. Um. So, yeah, so sometimes people don't reply to you, not because they're being horrible or because they're a terrible person or because they don't like you. It's just because like, they're fucking fried. So don't, don't, don't let her go yet. However... However, if if they're mugging off every time you're meeting up and they're not putting effort in when you're together, then that's, I think, where things have to, like, you yeah. have to look. Because friendship is a two-way street. And while you can maybe, you know, give someone a bit of leniency when it comes to replying or stuff like that, if they're being a shit friend, they, you can say they're being a shit friend. Yeah. If you're not getting anything out of it, yeah, then I think, yeah, sometimes it is easier Oh, it's better for your mental health and your well-being yeah. to walk away. But sometimes, like you said, have a conversation. I think sometimes we all have thing, or all of us have a tendency to take things personally. Like you said, mm. someone doesn't reply to me. Like I do this with like Lottie all the time. Like sometimes, like I think I've even said to her, like if I didn't text you or call you, like mm. I'd never hear from you. And she's like, yeah, no, you yeah. wouldn't. But she's like, it doesn't mean I don't love you. I just, that's just not what I do. Mm. But like, so now I know that I don't take offence to it. Oh, but if I didn't know that, yeah. But then also, like you said, there does come a point where if you're not getting anything back at all and they're shit and making up, I don't like flaky people. No, I don't If like you cancel because you're not well or there's a legitimate reason, mm. fine. But I really dislike it. I don't want to waste my makeup. I don't want to waste my Charlotte <laughs> Tilbury. I don't want to waste the makeup. Yeah, for um, sure. Because life's busy, time's precious. And if I've put aside time for you and you just can't be bothered to meet me like, yeah. in the bag of dicks. Yeah. But then also, again, they're showing kindness of someone doesn't want to do it for that particular reason if you're poorly, I guess. But then that's not your example. So you're more was like, if you just can't be bothered versus, you know, I'm feeling really fucking anxious state. That's fine. Okay, how can I help? Do you want me to come around? Do you want me to do anything? Whatever. Yeah. Change the plans. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a difference between someone not replying because they are a bit mentally overwhelmed versus them not putting no effort into the friendship. That's true, yeah. We also did actually have another listener that, that messaged us who was like the the other the other person to that so she says <laughs> she and uh, me <laughs> she has the opposite experience so she says i feel like i'm the friend that never puts any effort in i have social anxiety and all other kinds of anxiety and at the minute the only time i don't feel incredibly anxious is when i'm with my partner they think i'm just abandoning them from for my partner how do i keep their friendship without pushing my mental health too far or am i just overthinking it all 
Oh, do you know what? I'd say a little bit of both because if you have anxiety, then I think your brain will trick you into thinking everyone hates you. I, this is what I get. This is how my anxiety does its thing. I'm convinced all my friends hate me. Really? I'm convinced everyone hates me all the time and I'm in trouble with everything all the time. All really? the time. I I'm feeling really anxious. That. That is, so that's my current feeling today, everyone. I'm pretty sure everyone hates me. But they don't. Because people don't think about you the way that you think about that situation, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So I think you are potentially overthinking it. Um, and I think if they are your friends, then you can for sure have a conversation with them to yeah. say, you know, currently I feel less anxious, less, less overwhelmed when I'm with my partner. That's not to say I don't love you, but please understand that this is what's happening. Mm. And if they're your friends, they should understand. Yes. Yeah. And also they should want to maybe help you. And I think in these situations, it's, pretty good to push yourself they're your friends for a reason so try and try to make that effort of, of spending time with them if you're not enjoying yourself you can leave go to somewhere where you know you can leave or bring them around to your house or whatever makes you most comfortable your friendship shouldn't bring you anxiety or worry in fact they should be the antidote to that they should be the mm. thing that you want to do that you walk away from feeling so much lighter um, so I would have a conversation with your friends um, and hopefully they'll understand. And then if, and as and when you're ready, try and do some stuff with them. Yeah, because I think a lot of the time it will actually help. Like I, so when I'm feeling anxious, the last thing I want to do is talk to anyone, mm. meet up with anyone. I definitely like will just kind of shut myself away. Yeah. But actually the best thing for me is to go out or talk to somebody and have like a coffee with a friend or yeah. whatever. So sometimes I, I think you do need to push yourself. Um but it's like, you know, like the whole Maria Kondo attitude towards things in your house if they mm. don't bring you joy. I think that I personally am not very good at like ending friendships like because it's not it's so difficult. And I think it is about, about prioritising your mental health. We did actually have one message from a listener who said that my best friend is going through some tough mental health issues at the moment. It's really triggering for me. How can I be there for her but still protect myself? Oh my God, that's so hard. Mm. It's really difficult because you want to be there for your friend. And I've been there uh, in this exact space. And um, luckily I've got such a good friend where sometimes we're just like I'm having we, we say it I'm really sorry I'm having a menti b today <laughs> and we kind of gauge where the other one's at and mm. so we know that okay I'm going to be there for you today like have you got basically have you got the capacity can you listen have you got room to if they don't then that's fine because you want your friend to be okay as well so I think mm. it's again having it's all about really open and honest communication yeah. with your friends I was just and, gonna say the same thing because they want to help you but also realize that if it's triggering for you it's you're not going to help yourself and you're not going to be able to help them exactly yeah and like neither of you are going to win you're not going to get it yeah you might end up feeling worse and then there might be resentment there Mm. this is like communication really is vital in that sense and i feel like true friendships would withstand that so you say like if you were going for a really tough time Mm. and i was also not in a good place or found it really triggering like i'm sure i could say to you look i love you i care for Mm. you and i'm really sorry about what you're going through this is like, unfortunately, I am just finding this really triggering at the moment. Mm. And like, I just, I'm so sorry mm. if I'm not as in kind of involved and as yeah. there for you as I should be. Yeah. Maybe how else can I help? Like, yeah, because you might not be able to be that person who like, you know, listens and, and all of, you know, get really in depth about it. But you could be that person that takes that friend out for the day, go out for lunch, go out for dinner, get the person out, like go and have a nice time, go to the cinema. Yeah. Like you could do something different. Make them some cookies and just drop them at the oh, doorstep. Oh, well, that's nice. Do you know what I mean? Like, like nice, thoughtful things. That's Send them cute. a card with a, like a nice message yeah. in that then isn't like so involved of like, yeah. let's have a sit down. And tell me all, all yeah, about everything. Like, yeah, because yeah. that's a lot. So yeah, yeah it's just be, being kindness to each other. And hopefully if you're good enough friends, you'll you'll totally understand that that person's not doing, not able to be there for you because they don't love you and want to support you. It's because also they're going through a bit yeah. of a tough time too. That's fine. Just have your mentee bees together. So we got these. <laughs> that's what I mean, stay still all the time. Hi, stay still. <laughs> Sometimes I think we have different friends for different things as well. Sometimes, yeah, you know, yeah, for like sure. sometimes we want, like with Lottie, like I love our friendship because we don't do anything. I love that. For when you we guys. meet, I up. love you two so much. They Again, make no sense, everyone. You should not. They work. make less sense than me, Laura. <laughs> um, my goodness, they're the best. But um, we, I just love it because yeah. we just don't have to entertain each other or go and get drunk. We li- literally eat and watch documentaries oh my god that's an awesome that's I want to be in your great time can I be in your gang no <laughs> oh my god no can I stop saying <laughs> this is what you so me <laughs> me and Lottie actually went to Lauren's flat once we so watched, cool we watched everyone's talking about Jamie we did and Lottie's uh, face throughout she's she like was she's, she's not a goth but she's kind of like she's cool she's 
the coolest. Which is so cool, as opposed met. to me and Laura, who watched Everybody Loves Jamie. We love musicals, yeah. right? And and so I couldn't enjoy it because her face the whole time, every time <laughs> it would break into song, she'd go. <sighs> She's someone who like hates musicals for the reason that you'd be walking down the street and they'll go, "It's such a beautiful day," and like she's like, "Can't they just say it?" Yeah, like she's that person. She's that whereas person. me and Laura, are like, if we could burst we into would. song, yeah, and we do. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, Laura, I have some questions for you, and I know I'm so excited about your response. <laughs> we had a couple of questions about this actually, which makes me really, really sad. Um. Dealing with fat phobic friends. Mm. How do you feel about fat phobic friends? Eat them. Just eat them. <laughs> Don't like them. Just eat them. Just eat them. <laughs> That's the most perfect response you've ever given to anything. End of podcast. End of podcast and goodnight. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop. Uh, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, we had so many um, questions about this one question said I have a friend who's often fat phobic but she always says when I say derogatory things about fat people I'm not talking about you how should I react to this oh I'm so angry I'm right now. really this really got under my skin um, it's like passive aggressive yeah. like imagine if that was about race or sexuality <laughs> you wouldn't put up with it no. So don't put up with it. It's not acceptable. No. It is not acceptable. And I think that you really do need to set a clear boundary. And I don't like it when people preach and tell people what to do, but fucking need to tell them because it is, that is so awful that you have to put up with it because so she's awful. not thinking about how you feel. Yeah. Which is not a friend. And I, a friend. I do understand that there are a lot of people who do, you know, have fat phobia and, this, you know, there's a reason why podcasts like this exist. And some people who tend to be in smaller bodies who might feel like that. If you're, saying something bad about somebody who's in a body that is similar to your friends, understand that they're going to relate it to themselves because you're saying it about them, basically. Yeah. Like, stop it. Another listener said that she has friends who talk negatively about their weight all the time, which makes her feel like crap about herself. And she says, they talk about putting on weight and being disgusting, but they're all size tens. I feel like they must think that I am then gross. Should I say something to them? I'm not sure... Yes, she should. Yeah, yeah. It's re- look, listen, it's all relative. We talk about this all the time. Mm. We are in bigger bodies, right? Yeah. So life, like our experiences and stuff, like challenges and stuff like that, it is different. But you can be a size 10 and still like not like the way you look mm. and have like an eating disorder or body dysmorphia or whatever. It's all relative. It doesn't matter if you're a size 10 or a size 42. We all have body hangouts yeah. and issues. However... However, mm. you have to be mindful of yeah, other people. No, right, and right. I think she just needs to say to them, hey, guys, like, I know that there is no malice in this. I do know that. But when you talk about how disgusting you feel and when you talk about, you know, you feel really fat. Fat is not a feeling. I'll just put <laughs> that, that is there. not a feeling. Don't love yeah. that phrase. And it just makes me feel like really like kind of crap about myself because mm. I'm a size whatever. And like, can we just be a bit mindful about it yeah. going forward? Um, So going back to a little bit what we talked about before about, you know, friendships changing when when friends start having families and stuff. Mm. Big one. Um, Yeah, we had a really big one and it's, yeah, it's upsetting. So we had a few questions about this one, about losing friends to their families. And one of our listeners said, "Um, a few of my friends have recently gotten pregnant and even though I want to feel happy for them, it's making my relationship with them a bit difficult. It's making me feel sad and like I'm a bad person. How do I deal with this? Oh, I feel you so hard you're it's, not a bad person you're like, not I just a bad person that. it's completely normal i'll also add to that as someone who's like dealt with infertility and mm. wanting to have a family for like seven years i still find pregnancy announcements really challenging okay. even though i'm like at a, like a much better place you know going back to kind of your mental health and protecting yourself my natural reaction used to be not so much now but definitely used to be when a friend announced they were pregnant was to distance myself because oh, okay. i could not cope with that and i actually fell out with a friend Mm. because of this and I can see it from both sides right so when you're pregnant or you've got kids they are your world yeah and all you want to talk about is your pregnancy and your symptoms and your birthing plan and the kids names and all of that stuff and then when they're here they poo and all of that I don't want to hear but if you don't have kids Mm. it is boring right boring and I feel like there's no right or wrong it's just one of those things that sometimes you have to navigate and sometimes as with like romantic relationships you just kind of have to weather the storm a little bit i think some yeah. relationships stand the test of time and some don't maybe it's open and honest communication in all of it yeah. and like you said maybe sometimes it's weathering the storm the first couple of years of the baby's lives are can be quite difficult trust me they come back <laughs> it's great <laughs> 
So what about making new friends? Because this was something that so many of our listeners messaged us about. Because it is really hard, isn't it, I think, Hell to make yeah. friends. But she knows <laughs> yeah. you get older and to maintain them as well. Um, so one of our listeners says, how do I know when it's time to push through my anxiety and try to make new friends? Or when it's just time to let myself wind down at home? Life is so stressful. I feel like I have no time to try to make new friends or even upkeep the ones I already have. Oh, the, oh what a question. I don't, There's a lot in there. I don't there know because it's one of those things of, you know, I'm all about, you know, don't push yourself too much. Don't try and fill every single minute of your life. But also you do need people in your life. The You know, the, the human, humans, we need people in our lives. Yeah. I think if you're even questioning it, then maybe it's probably time for you to push yourself and find yeah. something. And for example, if that is from you want to try a new activity and you haven't got anyone that you want to try it with. That could be, you know, a That's new friendship. That's always a really great way, isn't it? I think like clubs and things like book club, running club. Yeah. Choir. Choir. <laughs> yeah, you've made loads of friends through I choir, literally live for it and yeah. it's been wonderful. And I love making new friends. I love meeting new people. I think it's the best. And, you know, if you are going through a tough time, friendships are the things that take you out of that. Yeah. So spending time with friends should be the antidote of you having a shit time. Mm. Like I know, you know, today I've spent all day with you. I feel like earlier I cried on the train because I'm feeling like she's hard luck, right? Don't, she's going to cry for me. Uh, right. I feel buzzing now because we're spending the day together and I'm going to choir tonight. I'm going to see my girls. I'm going to be all buzzing. Mm. So, but yeah, so that would be my advice. What do you think? 100% agree. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. We agree. <laughs> wow. Um, Get that on record. <laughs> Uh, we had another question about making new friends um, and she says, how can I be truly myself in new friendships as an adult? I feel like I always have my guard up and a mask on. That's so interesting. And I can so relate to that. Can you? Because I would be, if anything, the other side. Carol, tell me more. Sometimes I feel like I say what they want to hear or what I'm expected to say rather than just saying things. Interesting. And again, I think that comes down sometimes to self-worth and not feeling so confident in me as a friend is that even now yeah this is so, I think so interesting maybe a bit less so i don't really have any advice but all i would just say is that i think that is normal and you're not yeah. alone and try and like have confidence and faith in yourself and i'll i'll just remember that i'm there with you and i'm sure <laughs> loads of other people feel that as well hell yeah that's a, absolutely when you're making new friends i think when you're making new friends especially if you go to a thing where you don't know everybody and they don't know anybody they're feeling just as nervous as you do and they want to know the real you and you want to tell them the yeah. real you and you want to know the real them um i think if anything it's an opportunity to really be like hi here's me especially the older we get and stuff yeah yeah i think you're naturally that comes more naturally to some people like you yeah i would agree i think for some people like that isn't as like it easy. doesn't come i think as easy. do you know what i think if anything more people probably feel like you than they yeah. do me and that's totally fine because it's so intimidating it is so scary to go into a room with a bunch of strangers knowing that you kind of want to come out with one it's so scary you kind of need someone mm. go and find the extroverts in the room is my advice like you said it comes down to self-worth if you're you're fa you're fabulous whoever you are listening to this right now you're fabulous go and tell your new friends that and they'll love you too <laughs> it's great <laughs> i think the last thing i just want to say about friendship is that i think again a lot like romantic relationships and life in general like we are sometimes sold this romantic vision of what friendship should be like mm. and that like in the films for like bridesmaids for, like yeah maybe that's yeah. not a very good example actually <laughs> but like we're sold this idea that like your best friends best friends for life from yeah. school and you fall out but then you make up and it's all brilliant and you've got lots of different friends or a group of friends mm. and life isn't like that I certainly have like struggled and still struggle with building maintaining friendships and I think it's really normal so I think we ought to just all cut ourselves a little bit of slack for sure and like know that like sometimes friendships like they like they ebb and flow they ebb and flow, they ebb and flow. we're so grown up here we're so uh, grown up. I think I'll tell you right <laughs> Laura have you heard of am I the arsehole on reddit I haven't <laughs> right? no it's so good basically People anonymously post their stories so others can decide whether they're in the wrong in the situation or not. Right. And I have a few friendship-based ones for oh, you. Oh, uh, okay. And I want to see what you think. So this one, the first one, am I the asshole for deciding not to attend a wedding? Ooh. So this person has said, I had a friend, let's call her Clara, <laughs> and we've been close since we met. Early last year, I met a guy, let's call him Brad. 
I wanted to introduce him into my circle of friends, but unfortunately, Brad and Clara got into an extremely heated argument. It escalated so badly that they were calling each other terrible names, and I was so shocked since I have never seen any of them act this way before. Over the next couple of days, I tried to talk to Clara, but she was adamant and even gave me an ultimatum. Either I break off all contact with him, or she will break off all contact with me, and I reluctantly chose her. Cut to a few months later, and Clara has announced her engagement to Brad! <gasps> No, this is not true. Then invited me to her wedding. I said I would not like to attend. And since then, her friends have been hounding me saying I should get over myself. Am I the asshole for turning it down? Are you serious? (laughs) That's a resounding unanimous. No, right? She's not the asshole. (laughs) Bloody Clara. Don't believe that for a second. Fuck you, Brad. (laughs) Fuck you, Clara. Fuck them all. <laughs> okay, give me the next one. This is really fun. <laughs> this is so good. Give me the next one. Go. This is so good. Right. Am I the asshole for kicking out one of my bridesmaids for showing up in the wrong dress? All right, this has got to really capture us because uh, so far... Uh, yes, you are. Um, I have this friend, we'll call her Cat, that I asked to be one of my bridesmaids. We went dress shopping and I told them the colour theme I was going for. Cat immediately expressed that she thought forest green was a bad choice. She said she thinks the colour is not flattering and thought I should choose something different and more girly. She found out my maid of honour's dress was black and asked if she could wear black too. I said no, only my maid of honour is wearing black. So fast forward, we're all dressed and walking down the stairs before the ceremony is beginning in 30 minutes and we're going to take some pictures before. Kat is the last person to come down and she's wearing a black dress. Oh. I confronted Kat and asked her what was going on. She said she hates the bridesmaid dress as the colour is ugly and makes her look gross so she's wearing black. I told her to please go and change. She refused and started walking away from me. I said I'm going to ask her one more time and if she doesn't oblige I'm calling security and kicking her out. <laughs> this is excellent. She began <laughs> yelling at me to fuck off so I called security and asked them to please escort her out. She started making a big scene yelling how I'm such a bitch. <laughs> I can't force her to wear anything and that I'm horrible inconsiderate friend this is wild wild some of my other bridesmaids have been giving me shit saying that it was a little harsh kicking her out and embarrassing her like that am i the asshole for kicking her out that wow. is absolutely hilarious it's not is it, yeah, mm-hmm. okay the friends out of order okay for... what's her name clara cat 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 is wrong for having so much ag about a dress agreed it's your it's not your day you wear what the if color is a color is a color if, if your style is not for you you can say something about the style Agreed. If you're asked to be a bridesmaid, you pretty you much do what you're told, pretty much. But you... if you're uncomfortable with the dress, speak to the bridesmaid about it. Fine, but not the Ma- Perhaps, perhaps Come even on. 35 minutes before the wedding, not 30 minutes before the wedding. This is the thing. You don't do that right before the wedding. And call your bridesmaid that's about to get married an inconsiderate bit. <laughs> <laughs> Calling security may be a bit, a bit drastic. That was slightly drastic. Yes, again, security. don't move it for a second, but I'm here for the Jerry McCarness of it. Next. Love that. I think that's the last one. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Well, I absolutely love those. Uh, yeah, can we, we might have, have to can do we make some that regular more. feature, please. We might have to do some more. I loved it. Um, well, that is the end of this episode. I've absolutely loved it. Thank Me you too. so much for listening. And if you ever want to get in touch with us, you can DM us on Instagram at Go Love Yourself Pod or email Go Love at CrowdNetwork.co.uk. We'll be back with a new episode next week. But if you want more of us in the meantime, you can check out our Facebook group, which is Go Love Yourself Community. You can also support the show by subscribing to us on Patreon or Apple Podcasts, where you can get ad-free and early episodes for as little as £1 a week. Or you can listen ad-free on Amazon Music. And remember to check out our new YouTube channel. Woohoo! And we still do have a few tickets left to our show on Friday the 3rd of March. The link for that will be in the episode description. And that's it for this week. Love to see you later. Bye. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha.